one of the areas that Golded Research Labs focuses on is to help organizations answer a very simple question. Why is technology necessary but not sufficient to bring value? Many of these organizations have invested millions and sometimes hundreds of millions into advanced technologies. And then they are disappointed when it didn't realize the benefits that they were expecting. And the question is why? Is there something fundamentally wrong with the technology? Well, it could be. Uh, or actually there was nothing wrong with the technology, but there was something else. So what Dr. Goldratt developed was a framework that we apply today. He called it the necessary but not sufficient questions. And this enables us to very quickly pinpoint the main reason why any new technology, and that doesn't just mean a, a technology in terms of a physical technology, it could also be a technology in terms of an idea or innovation. Why did it not bring as much value as what we expected? It's based on two very simple premises. Number one, do you agree that a technology can bring value if and only if it can help to diminish a limitation? So if it doesn't diminish some kind of limitation for the user, by definition, it can't bring value. It might bring something else, but it can't bring value. Now the second follow-up question is, before the technology existed, the user had to find some way of living with that limitation. They developed certain rules to help them cope with that limitation. Now a question, what would happen if we give them this new technology but we never change the old rules that they used to live with the limitation before. It would be as if the technology wasn't implemented. And we see that almost everywhere. In fact, those technologies that flourish are ones that not only have created powerful technologies that can diminish or even overcome limitations, but they are technologies where the developers understood what rules had to change to fully exploit the power of those technologies. A great example of this is the example that Dr. Eli Goldratt shared in his book by that title, Necessary But Not Sufficient. If you haven't read it, I can highly recommend it. It's an analysis that was done on the ERP industry, enterprise resource planning industry, the companies like the SAPs and Oracle. These companies have got technologies that are incredibly powerful. If you think about what is the limitation that they could potentially diminish for an organization, two very distinct limitations. The first one is they can automate the storage and retrieval of information and transactions. And automating the speed and the accuracy of, of those functions should unlock a significant level of value to any organization. But they also solve another problem, which is the limitation of managers having to make decisions without having access to all the data that they need. Now you have these, this powerful technology that can address two fundamental limitations. So rightfully, you should expect a tremendous return on investment. If we've invested 10 million, how much should I get back? Well, if you've really solved these two limitations for me, I should get back a factor of two, three, five, ten times what I've invested. Now, I don't know if you've been following the press recently, but there's not too many customers that are jumping up and down of joy saying how much value they're getting from these systems. Why is that? Well, it can only be one of two reasons. They've implemented this technology and it hasn't actually helped them to diminish a limitation. Their limitation or constraint related to something that was not IT related. And as a result, they shouldn't expect to get any value. Maybe they, it helped them to create a sustainable system, maybe they can scale up in the future, but they shouldn't be expecting value right now if the technology didn't help them to diminish the limitation. But what if it did? What if it really could provide people with the data that they need to make better, faster decisions, or it helped them store and access data much faster? Well, if they never change the rules, that allow that company to live with those limitations, why would they get the value? A good example of that is the budgeting process. Now, budgeting is critical because it's a management decision of how best to allocate their scarce resources. In the old days, 
it took a tremendous amount of time to accumulate all the, the information or data that we needed to make that decision. So we came up with a simple coping mechanism, a rule that said, how frequently are we going to do this budgeting thing? Because it takes so much management attention. We'll do it once a year. Now, of course, there's a penalty that you pay for that, which is, what if you made the wrong allocation? You're going to be stuck with it for the whole year. And then on top of that, you're going to get, especially in governments, people going, spend it or lose it, right? If I was allocated 100, but I only need 90, I better spend it, else I'm going to lose it. So you end up never reporting the savings and being punished by the overexpenditure. But why do we do budgeting once a year? We now have technologies in our organization that can provide us with data in real time to allow us to make better, faster decisions about where to allocate resources. And that's a prime example of how we've implemented a new technology that theoretically could help overcome a major limitation, but we forgot to change the rules that acknowledge those limitations in the first place. So the basic questions that you can apply for any technology that you are involved with or which you have developed. Number one, what is the power of this technology? Try to be as clear as possible. Next question, what is the limitation that this technology can diminish? Third question, what were the old rules that were put in place to allow us to live with or cope with this limitation? Number four, what should be the new rules to really capitalize on the power and the last question, how can we embed those new rules into the system and ensure that the business model is aligned so that there are no inherent conflicts? That's the five steps towards ensuring that the technology that, you are, that you've developed or that you are using will really deliver the value that it should be possible.